am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Oh, I walk with him each and every day. I talk with him every step of the way. I am Oh, we're going to take it one more time. I am a, I am a friend of God. Oh, 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 oh. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He called me friend. I am a friend of God. 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 He called me I am a friend of God because he calls us his friend. My, 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 this is the second Sunday in Advent. Also, this is the first, the last first Sunday of the year. And we give God praise. I know there are some grateful people out there, some grateful people out there. Thank God that we've made it to this point in this year. We're getting ready now to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We invite all of our social partners right now that you would just click and share, connect with your friends. Invite them to this worship experience today. I guarantee you they're going to be blessed. They're going to be richly blessed. Would you just do it right now? Come on and get your party going on, your watch party, because we are getting ready to do a wonderful thing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? This is worship time. It is time to worship. Let us give God glory. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our morning song is a song of praise this morning. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, we sing hallelujah to our God. Uh, glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, uh, every praise is to our God. Without further mind.
Majestic Father, we come before you, God, on this day. Come, first of all, giving you every praise. Mm -hmm. For you, Father, are worthy. Yes, Lord. And you alone are worthy. Oh, Father, we come with hearts filled with thanksgiving. For you are a mighty Father. You are faithful. You are true to your word, and for that we say thank you. Father, we are thankful for one more Sunday morning just to be in the service. And Father, we are grateful that you brought us from the first Sunday in January to the first Sunday in the last month of the year. God, we know there are some that didn't make it with us. So we don't take it lightly, Father. We just thank you uh, for one more day. One more day to do your will. One more day to serve you, Father. We thank you. God, we know that all that we are and uh, all that we have, it is only because of your grace and your mercy and your loving kindness toward us. And for that, we say thank you. Father, we thank you for those who have assembled to participate in the service on this day. We ask God that you touch each person. Lord, whether it's through words sung, uh, touch and anoint the musicians, and then through the word that will be read, and Father God, most of all, through your preached word. Uh, for such a time as this, Lord, uh, we need a word from on high. And God, we know that you will bring, bring to us and send to us what we need for such a time as this. So God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask your blessings and your anointing and your power upon the preacher today, God. Uh, let your, the prayer and the words be words of encouragement, words of challenging, so that we will turn to be not only hearers of your word, but doers also. God, of all our thankfulness, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, whose death and resurrection we commemorate on this Sunday. So we thank you that he is our savior. We thank you that he is our healer, and we thank you that he is our deliverer. So Father God, all over the place, all over the land, all over the world, wherever this message will go out today, Lord, uh, let people be uplifted, uh, let them be encouraged, uh, and let them be with, with hope, Father, knowing that Jesus Christ is the one and only one. 
So we thank you, God. We give you all praise and honor. This is our prayer in the mighty, the matchless, the majestic name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank We're Lord. walking the light. It's beautiful. Beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright and shine all around us by day and Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. A morning scripture is from Luke, the second chapter, first through the seventh verses. Luke, the second chapter, first through the seventh verses. Again, Luke, the second chapter, first through the seventh verses. Luke, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse, reads as follows. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth to into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. This is God's word for your edification for your comfort, also for your exhortation. May God bless you. You may be seated. God bless you today, saints. God bless you. We're so proud to be in the house of God again, to worship in his beauty and among his people and to reach out to thousands of people all over this country and in the other parts of the world. We are so grateful that God has given us this platform that we can just send this worship service all over the world. Amen. It is a good day to be alive, and I hope that you are just basking in God's glory, giving him thanks for this day's journey. And we just want you to know that we are in prayer with you. And at the conclusion of this service, if you would like for us to pray for you, please uh, contact our church office, 513-825-4900, uh, and we will be more than delighted to pray for you. This is the first Sunday, and it is customary, and every month of the first Sunday, we celebrate uh, the death and the resurrection of Christ and the receiving of his Holy Spirit into our temple, our bodies. And so this after, after the service, uh, we have changed the time for our drive-by communion, which will begin now at 11 a.m., 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., and we know that you will love to come and to get this communion service on this last uh, month of the year. Come and receive your communion. Amen. At this time now, we're going to get ready to receive God's offering, his tithes and his offering. 
it is a good thing to be. Praise the Lord, Quinn family. I just wanted to let you all know that next Friday at 4 p.m., um, WAIF, WAIF, uh, 80, I think it's 88.3. Um, I will be a uh, featured guest on the radio station um, where they will be going through some of my songs on my Christmas CD. So I just want you all to know that uh, feel free to tune in. And God is in the blessing business. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> from the top. Good to know, good to know, good. 
It's so good. It's so good to know. 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 Jesus. Tell me, you ought to know. 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 Jesus. If you don't know him, tell him, get to know. Get to know, 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 Jesus. Yeah. It's so good to know. It's, it's so good, good to know, 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 Jesus. It's so good to know. It's so Jesus, it's so good to know Jesus. Check it out. It's so good to know Jesus. Does he live in your heart? Oh, do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? Amen. Thank you, praise team. Thank you so much with that profound question for every individual walking upon this land that God created. Do you know Jesus? The question of salvation. Do you know Jesus? And for those of us who can answer that question by saying in the affirmative, yes, I know him. And I want you to know that all of us who know him want you to know him as well. Because when you know Jesus, you have discovered something that is better than anything else upon this earth. I mean, there's some joy, there's some love, there's some peace, there's some understanding when you come to know Jesus. Amen. We'll come down to present you to worship in this setting today, the proclaimed word of God. The proclaimed word of God. It is taken today from the Gospel of Luke chapter 2 and uh, beginning at verse 1 and that is Luke's gospel Luke chapter 2 beginning at verse 1 in those days Caesar Augusta issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Coronas was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. My brothers and sisters, I want to share with us today in this Advent Christmas season on the subject matter titled Interruptions. Interruptions. Interruptions, they they come with the Christmas season as well as with life. For instance, trying to get home for Christmas in a snowstorm grounds a flight or provide hazardous driving conditions and interruption. Or when you get to that two days before Christmas Day, you receive a call from Cousin Joe and Joanne 
and their baby children. Saying we happened to be in the area for the holidays and thought we would stop by. Next thing you know, they overstay their welcome. Also in life itself, just when you're ready to retire, surprise, more tuition to pay. Just when we thought our plans were finalized, surprise, hmm. more layoffs, surgery, transfers, or treatments. Just when you selected your wedding dress and planned a church wedding, surprise, coronavirus, interruptions. They can steer fear and anxiety within us. They can steal our sleep and pickpocket our joy. They can cause us to question God and even turn away from God. Some of us right now may be facing an interruption in our lives. What we wanted and desired and what we received just did not match up. And now we are troubled and anxious and even angry. We all experience interruptions. We all get annoyed when a productive moment is interrupted. We all get fed up when scheduled events do not go as planned. If this season, this year, is hard for some of us. If, if we rather be looking for December the 26th more than December the 25th, then I have a story for all of us to consider. It's found in the Luke account in the Bible. As much as she tried to keep a good attitude, it was not easy. She was far from home, miles from her family, and even her own bed. She had spent the last few days on a crowded road, enduring the winter chill. Money was scarce. Friends were nowhere near. A warm bed and a hot meal was unavailable. Ask her which was worse. The pain in her heart or the pain in her back. And she'd be hard pressed to make a choice. She had envisioned giving birth at home. Mom holding one hand and aunt the other. A midwife, doting relatives, Joseph nearby and a crowd of neighbors outside the door. But the mother-to-be must use a cow stall for a delivery room and a manger for a bassinet. It's safe to say that she was disappointed. It was not the most pleasant of all settings. Joseph built a fire and heated the water. Mary cleared a spot on the straw and set about the task of bringing God's son into the world. This is not how she planned to celebrate her firstborn, the birth of Jesus. Mary met what we all meet in life, interruptions. Her well laid out plans in anticipation to celebrate her firstborn was not fulfilled due to an interruption. Mary was in her trimester of her pregnancy when she had Joseph and received a decree from the Roman emperor that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire 
They were doing fine. They were expecting everything to take place in Nazareth until they got the decree. The decree stated that all citizens returned to their towns of ancestral birth to register for the census. And because Joseph was of the descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem of Judea, David's ancestral home. Therefore, Joseph must now travel from the village of Nazareth of Galilee, where Mary and he had made their home, to the town of Bethlehem, some 90 miles away. We can imagine that neither of them were happy campers, traveling 90 miles on a donkey with swollen feet, back pain, Possible morning sickness, being fatigued and end up birthing her first child in a barn than the conveniences of her own home. Can you imagine what kind of language she may have used on her journey if she wasn't a godly woman? Can, can you picture the kind of looks she gave her husband, Joseph? Every time sharp pain flashed through her body while riding on that donkey. You know, we all get fed up with interruptions. However, if we allow trepidation to sneak into our minds at the prospect of interruptions, we'll cripple our productive abilities. Therefore, let us look now at three things we can do when our interruptions push us to our limits. One thing we can do when our interruptions push us to our limit is to maintain our motivation. Maintain our motivation. The vision and sight of getting to Bethlehem kept Joseph and Mary motivated to continue their unpleasant journey to birth the new Moor king. Whatever obstacles, disappointments, and challenges they encountered, it wasn't enough for them to lose their motivation to arrive at Bethlehem. You see, Mary was carrying a precious cargo within her for the salvation of the world. That alone was enough to remain motivated to sustain the journey to Bethlehem at a most discomforting time. In other words, they had a purpose behind their motivation. The purpose was to arrive in Bethlehem in sufficient time for Mary to deliver baby Jesus. They were willing to endure the interruption because they had a higher purpose in the uttermost of their minds. And that was birthing Jesus. Beloved, as we pursue our dreams, our destiny, and experience an unpleasant interruption, we must not allow the interruption to drain our motivation to keep pressing onward. In this life, we will experience interruptions, disappointments, surprise challenges, which will all try to prevent us from reaching our mission, our goals in life. But we must remain motivated, unmovable in spite of the endurance factors we will face. These interruptions has the frequency to zap our energy, keep us dispirited, and put our feet in cement. However, we must somehow maintain our motivation. One thing that would help us to maintain our motivation is keep Jesus before us. That's what Mary and Joseph did. They kept Jesus before us. As much as it was unpleasant for them and the interruption that came at a bad time, they kept Jesus before them. The risk factor will be there. The ups and downs of life will be there. Yet we must stay vigilant to remain motivated to pursue goal, our goals in life. The winds of life may blow against us. 
The tempest may rise. The risk factor may be appear overwhelming. The burdens may get heavy. The journey may get hard to continue. Things may not work out the way we had planned. People even may let us down. But we must keep Jesus before us. Because Jesus will serve as our motivator, our encourager, our stimulator, and our inspirer. Even when we think we cannot go any further, know that Jesus is our biggest cheerleader. He will not let us go to it by ourselves. He will not let us go on about it alone because he will be there. Therefore, when we encounter interruptions in life, don't let it stifle our motivation. When we lose our motivation, we begin to lose our desire. When we lose our desire, nothing seems worthwhile. When nothing seems worthwhile, the pursuit of life becomes stale. That's why you got to keep Jesus before you so he can inspire you to keep moving forward because everything is not going to work out the way you planned. Everything is not going to work out the way you thought it was going to be. Everything is not going to go as well. You wish it would have gone because of the way we live in this life anything can happen at any time like coronavirus happened to us at an unexpected time but you got to stay motivated in the way you can be motivated is to keep your eyes on Jesus the author and finisher of our faith we got to stay motivated in spite of it all another thing we can do when our interruptions Push us to our limit. Listen, is that chaos cannot prevent God from working things together for our good. Hallelujah. Chaos in our life cannot prevent God from working all things together for our good. The surprise pregnancy. The sudden census, the long road from Nazareth to Bethlehem, unpleasant and difficult, yet they resulted in the world's greatest miracle. You see, the narrative continues, and it says that Mary brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him and swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger. In other words, everything before this had happened so that this moment would occur. Let me say that again because I need you to get this. Everything before the birth of Jesus had happened that this moment of the miracle of all miracles could take place. The interruption happened so that the birth of Jesus would happen according to God's will. Was the first Christmas different from what Mary had planned? Yes. But it turned out greater than she could have dreamed. How's that? It worked out in her favor because our chaos cannot prevent God from working things out for our good. My God. And when Jesus arrived, Mary forgot all about where she was in a barn, in a stable. Surrounded by domestic animals. She forgot all about their surrounding and the journey that brought her there. My brothers and sisters, there are times when God uses our struggles to accomplish his will. We may not understand it. We may not like it. We may, we may be upset about the interruption, but God is working some stuff out for us. In other words, in our world of short nights, hard work, and high stress, we need to know that our chaos cannot prevent God from working things out for our good. <laughs> Let me give you this example, a live one. Uh, we may relate 
to the jalopy I once saw on a highway. <laughs> the, the car clattered down the highway. One door badly dented on the side, holding in place with a tie string. The hood somewhat caved in. The whole car needed painting. It looked as if it should be on its way to the junkyard. But here it is. On the loosely hanging bumper was a sticker. <laughs> and the sticker read, and I just laughed when I saw it. It said, Hunk, if anything falls off. <laughs> I just got to tickle when I saw that. It said, Hunk. If anything falls off, I wanted to hunk so bad because I felt that before you get to your exit, everything going to fall apart the way this jalopy looks. But here it is, my brothers and sisters. If anything is falling apart in your life, if everything appears to be coming apart at the seams, if you feel as if you are holding on by a thread, I tell you what you do. Hunk and call on the name of Jesus. He knows how to take what's falling apart in your life and hold it together until better times come. Right now, I wish I had a witness who can testify. I was experiencing chaos, a mess in my life. I experienced an interruption that I didn't care for. But I hunked and I called on the name of Jesus. And he kept me together until my better days came. I want you to know that some of us have stopped, haven't stopped honking. We are still honking. In spite of interruption, Jesus showed up. In spite of our madness, we kept on honking. And Jesus showed up. In spite of our chaos, we kept on honking. And Jesus showed up. In spite of our trouble, we kept on honking. And Jesus showed up. In spite of our mess, we kept on honking. And Jesus showed up. In spite of our disappointment, we kept on honking because Jesus showed up. And you may call us a goose if you want to, but we won't stop honking because we know that every time we start honking, Jesus show up. Do I have a witness out here? Is there anybody out here who had to do some honking? <laughs> and keep on honking. The last thing we can do when our interruptions push us to our limit. Here it is. We must be willing to accept short-term interruptions for long-term gains. We must be willing to accept short-term interruptions for long-term gains. Our faith and patience in God will help us to see that it's all right to endure short-term interruptions for long-term gains. In other words, we may all have our moments of interruptions happening to us. But if we are willing to endure to the end, we will discover that our long-term gains outweighs our short-term interruptions. Our interruptions may have an indelible effect upon us. It may cause much friction in our relationships, causes anxiety with our employment, create financial and physical loss, and play havoc with our minds. Mary and Joseph endured short-term interruption, but acquired long-term gains in the birth of the Savior of the world. They were willing to endure the short-term interruption 
for the long-term gain in Christ. You remember the story of Jacob's son, Joseph in Egypt? Look at him in prison. His brother sold him out. Part of a wife turned him in. And if ever a world caved in, it was Joseph. Or consider Moses watching flocks in the wilderness. Was this what he intended to do with his life? Hardly. His heart beat with Jewish blood. His passion was to lead the slaves, but now he's leading sheep. And Daniel, he was among the brightest and best young men in Israel. The equivalent of a West Point cadet or Ivy Leaguer. But he and his entire generation were being marched out of Jerusalem into Babylonian captivity. Joseph in prison. Moses in the desert. Daniel in chains. These were dark moments. Who could have seen any good in them? Who could have known that Joseph the prisoner was just one promotion from becoming Joseph the Pharaoh? Who would have thought that God was giving Moses 40 years of wilderness training in the very desert through which he would lead his people? And who could have imagined that Daniel the captive would soon become Daniel the king's counselor? God has made a business of taking short-term interruption for long-term gains. He did it with Joseph. He did it for Moses. And he did it for Daniel. And most of all, he did it for his son, Jesus, on the cross. The innocent one was slaughtered. Heaven's gift was murdered. Mothers wept. Evil danced. And the apostle had to wonder, when all that is good falls apart, what do good people do? God answered the question with a declaration. When Jesus rose from the grave and declared that all authority and power on earth as in heaven are in my hand, Jesus' death on the cross turned out to become earth long term gain. All because Jesus was willing to experience a short term interruption of his life on the cross. He wasn't worried about dying on the cross because the cross was just a short term interruption. He knew that there was a long term gain waiting for him because when they put him in the tomb he refused to stay there. He got up from the grave with all power in his hand and right now we are recipients of the long term gain and because he lived our living do not have to be in vain because he lived eternal salvation is now possible because he lived we have the assurance of his divine presence because he lived we he will supply our every need because he lived deliverance is available for everybody because he lives his grace becomes sufficient because he lives his mercy will follow us all the days of our lives because he lives his yoke is easy and his burdens are light because he lives there's refreshment for our heavy hearts because he lives there is satisfaction for the soul because he lives there's healing for wounded spirits because he lives there is help in our troubles because he lives there is victory for our battles because he lives there's support for our problems because he lives there's a friend that's closer than a brother because he lives there's a lawyer who'll be in our courtroom because he lives there's somebody who'll rock us to sleep at night because he lives we have joy bells in the morning because he lives we may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning because he lives there's praise in our heart and thanksgiving on our tongue because he lives 
here we have a doctor in the surgery room because he lived we got somebody who's able to provide food on our table and clothes on our back do I have a witness in here this morning aren't you glad that he was willing to go through a short term interruption for long term gain oh look at you now you ought to be giving God some praise you ought to be thanking God you ought to be exalting God you ought to be adoring God you ought to be giving God a hand clap of praise and lips ought to be shouting and rolling off your lips with the glory of God because while God lives we can face tomorrow because God lives our living is not in vain hey 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 is there anybody out there who can testify I'm so glad I'm so glad he lives Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I said, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Oh, you brought me. From a mighty long way. I 
Brothers and sisters in Christ, we thank you so much. I said we were going to be serving drive by communion at 11. That ain't going to work today. I'm telling you, we're in here praising God. We, we're in the atmosphere of praise in here. And, and so we don't let time dictate our praise. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And if you are receiving this message and this worship experience and you feel that there's a change that needs to come in your life, we just ask you to confess in your heart and say, God, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. I own Jesus as my Savior. And the Bible said, if you believe it in your heart, you are saved. And then you need to get into a church who will guide you and help to train and develop you as you walk out your faith in this world. You may do so by calling our number here at the church, Quinn Chapel Amy Church in the city of Forest Park, 513-825-4900. To God be the glory for great things he has done. May you have a terrific and wonderful week. And keep Jesus before you. Don't lose your motivation. Keep Jesus for you. Because he knows how to turn your chaos into a blessing. And don't worry about your short-term interruption. Because he can sure enough give you some long-term gains. Amen. God bless you. Until we meet again. Amen. Get ready now to go into our communion service and students will provide our assistance. We just love them dearly. They, they're so dutiful and so radiant and they're white. They look so angelic and we're just glad to 